Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Harrison Ralph. And I'm Kendra Schwartz. This week at Otterbein, summer break is right around the corner. Otterbein Sports have been doing big things and there are a few final concerts to end the year. But first, our lead story. If you have been paying attention to the scenery at Otterbein over the last couple of days, you would realize the track and field are gone at Memorial Stadium. John Bazika has more. Ground on the track and turf on Tuesday at Memorial Stadium as part of its renovation project. Don Stewart, who has been the athletic director at Otterbein for two years, talks about the process of the project till now. It was truly a relief that the university had already started those conversations and started the fundraising process um, for this project. Fortunately, uh, after I came on board, I worked really closely with the development office, this, um, who has just been an incredible partner for driving the fundraising initiative for this project. They're the ones that helped, uh, helped us get this done internally and making sure that we had uh, the funds in place. And so through their effort and what they've done, uh, once again, we're, we're able to, to break Thanks, ground and, and move this thing forward. So uh, it all came together really, really well. Stewart, who is very excited about the changes of the track and turf, talks about the price of the overall project itself. The total cost of the project right now is a little over $2 million. Of course, you know, any construction process, uh, project kind of ebbs and flows. There could be some hidden costs in there, um, but right now we're, we're estimating just over two, two million, between $2 million and $2.1 million. So whether you are sitting here, here, or even all the way up there, it really won't matter. Your view of the field will be completely different no matter where it is that you are sitting in the stands. And it's not just because of the renovations to the field, but also the sports played on it. All of our sport programs will be able to utilize the space for training, though. I, I think what people don't realize is that a turf field um, actually gives baseball and softball, uh, softball opportunities for long toss and you know, for doing some basic infield work. Um, you know, certainly the track is, is a conditioning tool that all of our sport programs will use. So uh, almost all of our sport programs will utilize this facility in some way or another, whether it's for training or for competition. And then outside of the varsity programs, you know, this is a facility that will accommodate also all of our recreational sports. So Ultimate Frisbee will have an opportunity to be out there, and as well as you know, any of the other club and recreational opportunities that come up, um, they'll have access to this field as well. Otterbein is also utilizing a new product for the turf from the Moats Group out of Cincinnati, the company installing the field to Otterbein. Stewart speaks about how this makes Otterbein different. The product that they are putting in place for us is actually a hybrid product, um, meaning that it's a surface that accommodates both football and soccer. Um, so, and we are one of the first schools in Central Ohio to actually utilize this product. So, uh, so Otterbein in, in some ways is breaking ground in that way too. At the moment, there is not a set date for completion for this project. The hope is to have it done by mid-August. When I spoke to Don Stewart, she told me, and I quote, the hope is to have it done for homecoming. For This Week at Otterbein, I'm John Bazika. Main Stage Improv Otterbein's premier improv troupe is at it again. They will be having their final show of the semester, Coney 2012, this Friday at 11 p.m. in Riley Auditorium at Battelle Hall. The show is free of charge and loaded with good times. On Friday, March 16th, after finals are over here at the Bean, all of campus is invited to attend a pep rally to celebrate the groundbreaking for the track and turf project. The event is set to begin at 11 a.m. at Memorial Stadium. This pep rally is being put on by the athletic department. Finals are next week at Otterbein and summer is right around the corner. On Monday of this past week, a G tag team was out on campus to survey the feelings students have towards the last week of school here in Westerville. Take a look. This is AG Tag Team. It is. It's the last one of the semester. Sad what? phase. I know. I know. But we'll be back next semester, so we'll don't back. worry about Three it. Three short months. Um, Three short months. Yeah, so we're going to go around and ask people how they're feeling about finals week? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Finals week is coming up next week. Hey, but after finals week, you know what it is? Summer! Summer! So basically, finals week is coming up next week. How are you feeling about it? I'm kind of stressed out. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you have a lot of finals? Uh, well, I have a lot, some papers to write and two, like, actual tests. Oh. And I just took a final today, actually. Oh, gosh. Are they yeah. long papers? Uh, four to five pages. It's rough. Oh, well, finals is coming up. How are you feeling about it? Pretty good. Yeah? Pretty good. yeah. How many finals do you have? We have six. Awesome. Awesome. So, after finals week is over, summer's here, what are you planning on doing? Uh, working and taking more class at Columbus Day. Don't think about it. Too much, too much, too much, too much. 
So Boston, mm -hmm. how, how are you? Doing good. That's good, that's good. Hey, so finals week is next week. H how you feeling about it? You stressed? Yes, you you excited? What? Yeah, I'm real stressed. Is that all? Is, is that all? Yeah. Hey, can you tell us what you're doing for finals week? I'm doing finals week. I'm drinking a lot of coffee and crying. Absolutely. When they're in Barcelona. <laughs> Hey. Hi. So, this is a this is a strange tag team today. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, I thought it was a fun tag team. It was a good one. The weather is finally pretty. It's supposed to be even warmer the rest of the week, and we're outside. There's people about, and Otterbein has just come alive. It's come alive. The leaves are coming out. It's just it's a great time. Week fifteen. Otterbein. We're alive here at Otterbein. We're it took alive. Us, it took us fifteen weeks, but we're alive. We're living slash dying, but it's okay because yeah. finals week is next week. Mm. Um, but hey, you know what? People are gonna push through their finals. Yes. And then it's gonna be summer. I'm Alicia. And I'm Grace. And uh, we'll catch you next semester. It is one of the unknown mysteries at the university. The tunnel system here at Otterbein may not be the most known part of this campus, but it is certainly becoming a hot topic at school. Although there is no documented history as to when the tunnels were created, back in the late 1950s and early 1960s, former student and service worker David Deaver was held responsible for cleaning the accumulate, accumulated muck uh, from the tunnels. The tunnels transport hot water and electricity from the service building to the rest of campus. Entrances to the tunnels are located throughout the campus in the basement of Roush, the basement of Cowan, and the basement of Towers, as well as near the library. There's also an additional tunnel that goes from the basement of Maine underneath the sidewalks to the visitors football stands of the Reich Center. Otterbein TV hopes to report more on this story in the upcoming months. Otterbein choirs will be joining together this weekend to perform the musical work called The Sea Symphony. Ralph Vaughn Williams wrote this 70-minute piece that includes four different movements. Otterbein singers, camarada, women's chorale, and concert choir will take the stage combined with the Westerville Symphony, Symphony Saturday night in Cowan. All are welcome to attend the concert, and it will start at 8 p.m. Well, that's it for entertainment, but stay tuned because after the break, Josh Overholzer will have some sports. an eventful week for the Otterbein men's lacrosse team would be quite an understatement. First, they took care of business against John Carroll to grab a 13-8 victory in the inaugural OAC championship game on Saturday. On Sunday, they learned they were selected to the NCAA tournament for the second consecutive year. Then yesterday, they traveled to Maryland to take on defending champ and third-ranked Stevenson in the NCAA's first-round game. 
The Cardinals kept the game close throughout the first half against the defending national champions. A 2-1 lead and cutting a 6-2 deficit to 6-4 before heading into the half down 7-4. Mike Sullivan continued his hot streak, tallying two goals for Otterbein. He now has 21 goals in the last eight games, but the Mustangs proved why they were number one last year, shutting out Otterbein 11 to nothing in the second half en route to an 18 to four win. Stevenson continues their quest for a second consecutive title on Saturday against Cabrini College of Philadelphia. Otterbein ends their season at 12 and five, setting the record for fewest losses in program history. Well, the NCAA tennis brackets for both the men and women were released on Monday, and both Otterbein teams hope to carry success past the regular season. The women posted an impressive 20-2 record this season, 8-0 in OAC play. They'll open play first, taking on Trinity University out of Texas today in Fredericksburg, Virginia. The Otterbein men, who finished the season 18-4 overall and 7-1 in league play, will play on Friday against Messiah College at host school Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. And the season may be over for the Otterbein softball team, but awards are still coming in. Senior Laura Basford was named the 2014 Ohio Athletic Conference Player of the Year on Sunday, becoming the first Cardinal ever to win that award in softball. Basford led the OAC in batting average, runs scored, and stolen bases, while coming in second in hits and on-base percentage. Basford leads the program as its most decorated player in school history, holding claim to 19 school records. Senior shortstop Rachel Putoff earned honorable mention honors, making her a two-time All-OAC pick. And that'll do it for sports. Now back to Harrison. And that's all the time we have for this week's show. Uh, for Kendra Schwartz, Josh Overholzer, I'm Harrison Ralph. Have a great summer.